need good cops, even though you are a psychiatrist now. And this mugging business seems to be something right down my alley. You think so, huh? Well, let's see how this new science works. Now, first, we'll see how the old science works. Now, you know what I need. Six cars in the area, two men in each car. I'll take Kelly with me. You got it. I'll feed you everything I know as soon as I can. I've got last night's job outside, Catherine Elio. Here's her case history, Doc. Anything interesting? No, they uh, talked to her downstairs. They've got all the facts. Now they're waiting for you to interpret. Oh, the boys are waiting for me to interpret, huh? Well, <laughs> I'd better give it a try. Bring her in. This way. This is Dr. Graham. I don't need no doctor. And if I do, I got a family doctor. Dr. Graham is a psychiatrist, Miss Elio. A psychiatrist? Mm -hmm. Well, now that's the straw to break any camel's back. I get attacked on a city street where I'm entitled to protection. The guy who did it needs him, not me. Please, please sit down, Ms. Elio. Let me tell you something. I don't believe in head shrinkers. How do you like that? I think they're overrated. I'll tell you the truth. I'm sorry I reported it. How do you like that? I'm sorry I reported it. All the guy cop was a lousy four and a half bucks, plus the bag, which I didn't pay for anyway, which I got from the guy who gets them wholesale. And this guy, he's been trying to make a little time with me, which he hasn't got to first base. But he keeps trying. He cut your cheek, didn't he? The guy who gets the bags wholesale? No, no, no. Last night's mugger. You realize, of course, that you're not the first one who's been attacked. Well, it wasn't an attack, really. If you know what I mean by attack. Uh, the man is not a rapist. So far, there hasn't been any actual sexual attack. But you're one of a series. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I read in the papers. <laughs> you had a pretty hard time of it today, haven't you? You can say that again. Well, now, why don't you just sit back and relax? I'll give it a fast run through, and then, if you don't mind, just a few little questions, hmm? All right. Talk me into it, Doc. Now, late last night, you were walking along a deserted street. You were carrying a handbag, shiny, over-the-shoulder type. Patent leather. That's the only kind the guy gets wholesale. Suddenly, an arm was around your throat, and you were pulled back into a dark alley. The attacker was a tall man, wearing dark glasses, and he had a knife. But it was too dark for you to have any other description. He cut the bag from my shoulder. He said, don't scream. And somehow, at the back of your mind, you felt relieved. You felt the robbery was over, and that you wouldn't be harmed. When suddenly, he used his knife on your left cheek, and then he ran. And now, Miss Elio, just a little help, huh? Yeah. Try to remember something about him. Any detail. All right. So he was tall. And he was wearing a hat. And them dark glasses. <laughs> Well, how tall was he? Tall, like, like you, tall. And then he spoke? He said, don't scream. Well, what was his voice like? High, low, gruff, smooth? What do I know? A voice, a, a nice, deep, soft-talking voice. Kind of like yours, a gentleman's voice. Kind of sexy, too, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Elio. Now, uh, can you tell us anything else about him? Nope, you got it all, Doc. Do you mind if I look at the knife wound? You won't hurt. No, no, I won't. Thin, straight cut, not too deep, almost, almost tender. Sure, real tender. Three stitches worth of tender. Well, that's about all. Miss Elio, now, that wasn't too bad, was it? No, not too good either. You really work a person over at this station. I, I hope you do as much with the crooks. Well, thank you very much for your cooperation. Uh, I, I'm sorry.
sorry what I said about the, the psychiatrist, doctor. <laughs> you know how it is. Some people think they're crazy. More people than you think. Goodbye, Miss Elio. Goodbye, doctor. Yeah. Like I said, kind of sexy. Like you. Uh huh. Well, that's uh, number 11. 11 and eight weeks. All in a pattern, all in the same area, Lincoln Heights. All the bags taken by cutting them away. All women, all cut in a thin straight line on the left cheek. And all hysterical. They should be. This is a new type of criminal, a compulsive, obsessive male who does odd things in odd places for odd reasons. Well, I gotta run. Oh, Kelly, you're sitting out of plant with me tonight, you know. Yes, I know. Where'll I pick you up? At Claire's? Uh-huh. Lady cops. Do we need them? There are two citations and a special mention to say that we do. Uh, Doc, yes. I think the chief's falling for her. Let him get in line behind me. <laughs> See you later. Hello, Eddie. Well, hello, Doc. How are things going, Eddie? Oh, well, lately, Doc, I've been running myself pretty ragged with pharmacy college every morning on the GI Bill and working most every afternoon and in the evenings in this hack. And then on top of that, a wife who's expecting in three months but who still wants to go out to a movie or to a concert if I get home early enough. Well, maybe you ought to take her out once in a while. Well, what happens, Doc, usually when I get a night off is I come home and just fall asleep in front of the television set. Sometimes Molly just sits there and cries when I do. You're both young. Try to see it her way. Well, I'm trying, Doc. I'm trying, but right now we got ourselves another problem. Jeannie. Isn't that Molly's sister? Yeah. you never seen her, never met her, but, uh, boy, she's something to look at. About 18 and a she built. She stays out most every hour of the night and sometimes won't even talk to Molly, and that worries her, and then Molly worries me. Well, you shouldn't get excited about a kid who wants a good time. Does she go to school? Oh, no, no school. No, no, she works up at uh, that coquette. The diamond dance joint? Yeah, that'll give you an idea of some of the friends she hangs around with. Molly thinks she's in some sort of trouble she can't talk about. That's why she made me promise to bring you home, Doc. When? Well, as a matter of fact, right now. <laughs> it's impossible. I'm late already. Well, look, Doc, I tell you, this is something I don't know how to handle. And I know you specialize in people's problems. And believe me, right now, Jeannie, well, she is a problem. Make it another time. Well, Doc, I'm telling you, this time it is urgent. She's threatened to leave home. And, and just yesterday, she, she just stood there in the middle of the room and told Molly to shut up and mind her own business. Now she doesn't even consider us old enough to talk to. Couldn't you come by for just a few minutes, Doc? It's right on the way. Well, all right. But I'll have to make a call from your house. Oh, that's all right. Be my guest. Well, there's the phone, Doc. Molly's probably upstairs. I'll go get her. Thanks. Oh, hi. Hello. My name's Graham. Pete Graham. Nicholas Greco. Nick, I just got to use the phone. OK. Oh, don't leave. It's nothing personal. It's quite all right. Nice to have met you. Hi, sweet. Peter, where are you? Tied up, slightly. Well, I'm starved. How long will you be? Oh, say, um, half an hour. Well, hurry up. I'm on duty tonight. I know. So am I. Goodbye. Well, I'll be down in a couple minutes, Doc. I hear you met the ghost that haunts the house. A ghost? Yeah, Greco. He sticks to this house like wallpaper. See, he's got it kind of bad for Jeannie. Uh, what is he, uh... A neighbor? Yeah, he lives up the street in that big house we went by. Been away to school for a while, and, well, he came back and found Jeannie all grown up. Now he can't get him out of the house. What about Jeannie? Does she like him? No, I don't even think she knows he's alive. But he keeps hanging around like a dope. 
You know, Molly and I are kind of sorry for him because he's really not a bad sort of a fellow. A bit of a screwball, if you ask me. Hello, Dr. Graham. Molly, you're looking very well. I hear the baby's only three months off. Dr. Graham, I know Eddie kidnapped you. And it's unfair of me to make him do it. Forget it. I'm glad to help. Now, tell me about Jeannie. Where is she? She locked herself in her room. We told her you were here. Dr. Graham, I was 18 once myself, not so long ago. I know something about girls' problems, but... What seems to be specifically wrong? I don't know. I can't get a peep out of her. But she's in trouble. Serious trouble. Oh, now, Molly, you know, I don't know. You and that imagination of yours... She's got secrets, Eddie. Somebody's got to pry it out of her. And I was hoping maybe you knew how. She's built a wall between us. Sometimes I think she hates me. Oh, Molly, that's a terrible thing to say. She's threatened to leave home. That would just kill my mother. She's sick already. Well, look, Molly, this is why the doc's here. Now, why don't we let him talk to her? I'm going to take Molly on down to her appointment with the doctors, but I'll be back to pick you up, Doc. Well, stay with her. I can get another cab. Well, I got to work, Doc. I'll be back for you. Jeannie. Jeannie, the doc's down here waiting. I'm leaving now with Molly. Thank you for coming, Dr. Graham. Come on, honey. We'll be back, Doc. So you're a genie. What is it you want? Whose idea was this anyway? Maybe Molly's trying to fix me up with a likely prospect? <laughs> no, I'm not a likely prospect. I've got a girl of my own. Maybe you know her. Claire Townsend? You... And that girl from the dance hall? Perhaps that makes us better friends. Look, I know all about who you are and all that. Gee, your sister's very worried about you. She's got more to worry about herself. Maybe she's getting a little old. Maybe she's getting a little jealous of a younger sister. She thinks you're keeping secrets from her. I have no secrets. Are you in any kind of trouble, Jean? If I was, would I tell you? Perhaps not, but why not tell Molly? I wouldn't tell it to anybody. I'd... I'd work it out my own way. Are you? Working it out your own way? Maybe I am. Look, I don't want to pry, but I happen to know your sister's very worried. She looks for trouble. All she has to do is sit here all day long, waiting for a baby to be born. Look, I didn't send for you. Suppose I drop around to the Coquette some night, and you and Claire and I go out and have a drink and a bite to eat, hmm? No. No drinks, no bites. Please, give me a chance to help. Let me try. I'll call you when I need you. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, Jean. I guess I haven't been much help to your sister. Dr. Graham? Yes, Jean. Thanks anyway. That's all right, Jean. you. What's the matter with me? You going out tonight? Yes. You and me, Jeannie? No. Where are you going? You making a survey? Where are you going? I asked you fair. To work. It's a word you wouldn't know. Aren't you? 
don't you skip that joint tonight and, and we'll do the town. Hmm? I'm in the mood. I'm not. Please, Jeannie. You and me, please. No. Once and for all, no. Just rare enough. You're getting to be quite a cook. Thank you, sir. Why are new brides supposed to be such dopes about cooking? Oh, that's only in comic strips. By the way, when are you going to be my new bride? Soon. As soon as I get a couple of more assignments behind me. How are things going on that dance hall job? Oh, it's on for tonight. I have a date to dance with the pusher. You see, we have a little deal. He trusts me now. I don't like it. It's too dangerous. Hopheads get funny ideas. Who doesn't? Anyway, I'm covered. Well, I still don't like your volunteering for these dangerous assignments. Why not? Don't figure it all out at once. But when you do, include me, a home, and children. That's what I want more than anything. Just give me a little more time. It's getting late. I better go. Maybe I'll drop around later and, and take you home. I'll save you then. Does the name Jean or Jeannie Page mean anything to you? Definitely. Very pretty, very young, very shaky. It's my girl. I met her earlier this evening. Oh, you don't stand a chance. She's in love. How do you know? Oh, trust the woman's intuition. So Jeannie's in love. Well, that must be an important part of it. Of what? Hello, Kelly. Hi, Claire. How about a cup of coffee? Thanks, there isn't time. Well, another mugging again tonight. The same routine. We'd better get going. I'll tell Jeannie Page to expect you. <laughs> you do just that. We've had 11 similar muggings now. Draw me a picture, will you, Doc? What kind of a guy is he, a monster? No, he's no monster. He's an ordinary man like you and I, outwardly. But inwardly, he's got a conflict that keeps him hopping. That's an opinion. Only. Well, does he know what he's doing and what he may be in for if he gets caught? Oh, he knows. For sure. Well, why no sexual attack? I mean, if the motive isn't robbery, like you say. Well, what he does represents a sexual attack for him. Hmm? A psychoanalyst will tell you that the knife, the cutting, the pocketbook are all symbols. Uh, I guess he's no plain, everyday mugger. Not a chance. He can't help himself. He's a driven man. His pattern is set. He'll hit and hit again until we catch him. And when we do, I think he'll be glad to see us. Hey, dig that. Your type? Hey, Doc. Could our mugger kill? He could, but I doubt it. Doc. Just a minute, Mac. Hey, whoa, 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 what is this? A stick up? Yeah, just hold everything. Check him. It's clean. Any special destination, Mac? Well, what do you mean? Where am I going? That's what I mean, Mac. What gives you the office to be asking questions? This. Cops. Now, where was it you were going, Mac? I was going home. That's where I was going. You weren't perchance following that good-looking doll that just came along, now were you? 
Yeah, I was. And it wasn't by no per chance. Would you sort of uh, explain that, if you please? I don't need no explanation. This is a democracy, ain't it? It's the United States, ain't it? Man's got a right to follow up on his own wife, ain't he? Wife? You heard me right. Well, how come you were following her instead of escorting her? Simple. We had a battle. She's the flirtatious type. We have lots of battles, mostly in saloons. All right, Mac. Get in the car. A car for what? A free ride. We're taking you home. Don't you have a key? She took him. Yeah, who is it? It's me, Mac. Your name really Mac? Yeah, so what? What's wrong with Mac? Nothing, Mac. Not a thing. Who are your friends? They ain't no friends. They're cops. Cops? What are you doing with cops? What's going on? Uh, they... Look, lady, uh, he was following you, and we thought we'd better pick He's him got up. a right to follow me, ain't he? A husband's got a right to follow a wife. I read it somewhere. Well, we were mainly interested in protecting you, you understand. Hey, you're cute. I mean, if a guy ain't got a right to follow his wife, who has? I mean, it's perfectly legal, ain't it? Wow. Where'd you get that eye? She gave it to me. Another night, another battle, another saloon. On the other hand, a gorgeous guy can follow another man's wife, and I got nothing against that. If the other man's wife is me, and the gorgeous guy might be someone like you. Hey. Look, it happens. Everything depends on the point of view. All kinds of points, all kinds of views. <laughs> well, you've made your point. Good night. Get in here. Uh, I'll chalk up another false lead. You know, when you think there are dozens of teams like us doing the same thing we are with no results, it's uh, pretty discouraging, huh? Well, what do we do now? Well, you go back to the car and sit it out. I'm going for a walk. Remember, I screamed. Twice I screamed. And then I passed out. Passed out cold. <laughs> so naturally, there ain't very much I really can tell you. Uh, when I come to, I was in this here alley. My bag was gone and my face was bleeding. Do you have any idea of what time it was when you got off the bus, Mrs. Wexler? Oh, yeah, on that I got a perfect idea. I looked at my watch just before I got off. <laughs> so naturally, I got a perfect idea what time it was. Naturally. <laughs> What time was it, Mrs. Wexler? It was 20 minutes after 4. That's about a half hour after we finished with Mac and his wife. Do you usually come home that late, Mrs. Wexler? I was over by my sister's house for Canasta. You know, Canasta, the card game. Well, the girls got over a little late. And you know how it is when you play cards. First thing you know, it's very late. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Wexler. Uh, I, I can go? Mm -hmm. And I do hope we haven't inconvenienced you. Oh, no, it's only uh, uh, from here on, I ain't walking in the street without no escort. Not once, I ain't walking. Of course. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Kelly. Goodbye, Mrs. Wexler. Oh. Chief wants you to see this, Pete. Some information that just came through from Chicago. He wants you to follow up on it. What do we got, Doc? Information from Chicago. They have a mugger out there who once worked with a mugger called Jack Randolph, alias Skippy Randolph. Well, what's that got to do with us? Well, the ex-con says that Skippy is here. Arrived July 29th. July 29th. That's the date of the first mugging in this whole series. The chief thinks we ought to look into it. What do you think? 
Well, if the chief thinks we ought to look into it, we look into it. And did Chicago send a description? Yeah, tall, dark, about 35, is hit the can twice, both times for second degree assault. Muggy in the streets. Tall, dark, about 35. Go find this particular type guy in a city the size of this. Just go find him. You ever been to a Turkish bath? A Turkish bath? You ever been? No, I ain't never been. <laughs> You're gonna be. Hello, get me Fats Donner at the Donner Baths in 4th Street. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Fats Donner. A small-time hustler like this Randolph, sooner or later he hits Donner's Turkish baths. And if he doesn't, Fats Donner knows where to find him. It's a sort of clearinghouse in the Chief Hood Department. And this Fats Donner will talk, huh? For small favors granted by the department. What kind of man, Fats Donner? Oh, a, a character, cynical, with a lot of peculiar ideas of his own. Always in his own steam bath, trying to lose weight. Hiya, Fats. Hi, Dad. With your friend. Jim Kelly. Hi, Jimmy Kelly. Hi, Mr. Donner. Uh, sit down, cats. Make yourself the home. I'll scram out of here, you guys. Where's it itching, Lieutenant, taking a Turkish bath in the afternoon? A fellow named Randolph, a small-time chump. Blew in from Chicago about eight weeks ago. I dig, Lieutenant. That cat's square handle is Jack, but he goes by name Skippy. You're real hip, Mr. Donner. You, uh, want him bad? The Chief's interested. Oh, I'm moving up in company, eh? How'd you like to have him tonight? I'd love to have him tonight, Fatso. Please, don't call me Fatso. Now, hit me again. I'd love to have him tonight, fat. I got my license renewal coming up in a couple of weeks, Lieutenant. We bat a thousand here, you know. Nice, clean joint. How do you figure I'm gonna make out my renewal, Lieutenant? If you're batting a thousand, you shouldn't have any trouble, I don't think. I got you okay on that, Lieutenant. If you're batting a thousand. I'm batting, I'm batting. And you got the okay. Sold. Now, how'd you like to go to a little crap game tonight? A floater from Albany in one of the warehouses here in town. Well, Mr. Randolph be there? Oh, you betcha. And who figures to know you since you became a whole big doctor, bitter? <laughs> what time, Pratt? Uh, about ten bells. I'll pick you up. You got a date, man. But please. No rumble. Should all be quiet. Quiet. Okay, I'll keep it very quiet. There's a fix-in with the watchman. No trouble with the police? Ah, no trouble. Like I told you, it's a floating crap game. They haven't caught up with us yet. First man on the left, that's Randolph. <laughs> Not me, I don't dig dice. I'm strictly in the card world. This guy is the sucker, me. <laughs> I'm blowing. <laughs> How are things going? Hot or cold? Hot and cold. Depends on who's shooting. Eight right. Shoot point. 20 Got it. Oh, fresh money. Let's roll them. Let's roll them. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right, you got it. You got it. It's all on the table. Oh. What are you doing? Come on, Joe. Joe, Joe. Hey, Joe. Oh. There you go. All right. I got it covered. Penny don't. Penny don't. Penny don't. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Just give me a minute. Here we go. All right. Shoot the 50. Let it leg. All right, all right. I got it covered. Shoot it. 
Turn it off. I got 50. I got the other 50. Pistol. Shoot the works, gentlemen. Double or nothing. I got a hundred. I got the other hundred. Dice. All right, let's go. Let's go. Penny dollar again. Penny dollar again. All right. Penny dollar. Shoot it all. Four hundred bananas. Come on, gentlemen. Drop your money. You're holding me up. Four hundred open. I got 200. All right, all right, I got the other two. What are you doing? Wait a minute. Yeah? I'd like to see the dice. Oh, come on, man, you're holding me up. This is the first good roll I've had tonight. I want to see those dice. Well, you'll see them when they get around to you. Men like you've been asking for it. Hold it. All right. Scoop up that 800 bucks. These monkeys make us play rough. We're entitled to a little profit. We're going through that door and down those steps backwards. The first punk that puts his head through gets a load of lead. So help me. Get out of here and split the dough. Wow. You really threw those bums around. Where'd you learn the judo? I was in the Marines. Ah. Forget it. I was in the Corps, too. Sixth Division. I was in the third. Iwo? Uh-huh. I was at Iwo and Okinawa both. Rough, huh? What are you doing now? Hmm. Driving a truck. Uh-huh. And you use the gun for protection against dangerous pedestrians. <laughs> what about you? You want the truth? Sure. I just got out of the can. What they hit you for? Nothing serious. I pasted a dame, a hooker. Only she tried to hook the wrong guy, me. Dames. They're always trouble. Look, uh, maybe tonight was a lucky break. Maybe you and me ought to tie up. You with your judo. I got something going that's pretty good. I thought you were a truck driver. <laughs> I got laid off. If your proposition's good, kid, I'm listening. Muggy. It's safe. Well, look who's here. Oh, it's you. What are you doing here? Uh, I just like Chinese food, those soft noodles, crazy. Oh, you must be working on that, uh... You got any news for me? News? No. No, but I decided I wouldn't take any more chances. That's why Sydney's here. My wholesale boyfriend. Uh, how do you do? Protection, huh? Well, uh, look, uh, I'm very busy just now. Would you mind? Oh, oh, there's no point being rude, is there? Well, I didn't mean anything. Oh, don't be silly, Sidney. Isn't he cute? Hmm. I can't appreciate that fact. I'll be calling you about that uh, matter in a couple of days. Oh, you promise? Um, oh, don't call. Uh, just uh, come along. You got the address. Look, honey, what does he get for your wholesale? Plenty. You two got something going together? Oh, yeah, they're, they're old friends. Huh? What's the racket? I'm in the garment business. <laughs> <laughs> he sure is. Listen, uh, I'll talk to you some other time. Good night, huh? Oh, I can take a hint. Come on, Sydney. Uh, you call, you promise. I will. Uh, it's healing fast. That's good. Take care of it. I'll see you. What hit her? A gang fight. She's always getting the trouble. She's wanted in six states. That dizzy broad? She's mixed up in a hot furniture deal. The guy with her is just a front. 
They wouldn't go for that type in Chicago. Forget it. Now, what was this proposition you were talking to me about? Mugging. On a dark street, you're hardly taking a chance. Old guys? Old guys, young guys, what's the diff? Safe, clean, and easy. But the loot's chicken feed. No. No, not if you work the right neighborhoods. Why, with a guy like you, we can... I don't like it, knocking off old guys and dames. Who said anything about dames? Oh, no, dames I steer away from. Right away, they try and hang an attempted rape on you. And like that, they put you away for a long, long time. No, dames is out. Carrying a gun on a heist like that just as bad. We don't carry a gun on them kind of operations. You carried it tonight. <laughs> Look, it's a memory of the stretch I did on Iwo. Well, or souvenir. Or San Quentin. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> sure. I got me a war souvenir, too. A bazooka, only it's too big to carry. Let's see the piece. Loaded for bear, huh? Yeah. When it rains, you carry an umbrella. Now I can tell you something. I'm here, too. No. Let's see. Look. Oh, no. What did I do? We'll find out downtown. Can't we stay uptown and talk? No. Get going. And if I say no? You slide out of there nice and easy. Be good. This may be your gun, but I'm holding it. Now let's go. What a sucker. Where did you ever get the name of Skitty? You want to tell me? I wouldn't dare. What are you doing here, anyway? A nice girl like you. What else can I do? What else do I know? You're so young, you should be in school. I can't have my sister supporting me. What about a nice boy? Getting married? No. But there is someone. I saw him once, you know. Okay, girls, shake it up. This ain't no rest home, you know. I'm waiting for a date. Well, you can hustle around while you're waiting, can't you? You mind? Got it? You bet. Give. I don't give till I get, sister. A hundred clams on a line. I hope you got it stuck onto you somewhere. Thank you, Miss Scope. Let me go squawk. Go, go where? What's the idea? You're under arrest. Arrest? For what? For dancing? Easy, Curly. Promise the management no disturbance. Oh, what I do? What's the beef? Ain't a guy allowed to dance with a chick? That chick's a policewoman. Bitch. How about a dance, gorgeous? No more dances. My ticket says different. Leave her. Your job here finished? Thank heaven. Yes. You know, I think you've had enough. Tomorrow, I think you and I should go down and apply for a marriage license. I think we should, too. No smooching. 
We're not smooching. We're serious. No smooching on the floor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's Jeannie at the bar. Hello, Jeannie. Hi, Jeannie. Hi. How about a drink? No, thanks. Something to eat? Oh, uh, no, I have a date. Why don't you have him join us? We'll go someplace together. I'm joining him. It's not near here. We'll get a cab and take you there. Oh, no. No, Peter. She wants to go alone. It's a long trip. I'd just as soon go by myself now. Good night. Good night, Good night. Jeannie. Peter, there's something I want to tell you. Let's get out of here. Of course. Do you mind coming to headquarters? I've got a daily to pick up. Sure. She was wobbling that night. Real sick. She let me take care of her at the club when I offered to see her home. She said she was going to keep this date and wouldn't let me come with her. I worried. I didn't think she could make it alone. So I followed her. Where'd she go? Out on the D train to 236th Street. Second stop from the end of the line. And the boyfriend? Oh, he was there to meet her. I didn't want to upset her, so I turned around and came back. But you saw him. What was he like? Nice looking boy. I'd know him again if I saw him. She must have had quite a case on him to go that far when she was that sick. Love, dear heart. Love. <laughs> Would you ride to the end of the line for me? For you, I'd crawl. <laughs> Let's crawl home. It's been too long a day. Randolph's positively not our man, Chief. The reports show that four of the Muckers victims, including last night's, had a fairly good look at him. There's no positive identification to Randolph. Yes, I know. We'll get rid of him with the Sullivan charge. Sorry, sir. What is it, Kelly? Call just came in. They found a girl in Jackson Park. Has all the earmarks of our Mugger, with one exception. What? This one's dead. It's Jeannie Page. You know her? Yeah. Are you positive of that? Definitely. Looks like this is your mugger. It sure does. It works. Only this baby gave him a battle and tore his dark glasses off him. He used his knife for more than a cut in the cheek. Five stab wounds in the heart and two in the stomach. We got the glasses. Yeah, nothing special. Ordinary five and ten job. This is the first real thing we've got on it. Any idea of the time of this thing, Doc? About four o'clock. Four o'clock this morning, I'd say. Autopsy will do it exact, but I'd say about 4 o'clock. I'm simply pointing out that it's possible that it wasn't our mugger who killed the girl. Why? Because you package up an idea that we're looking for a special type guy? Compulsive, obsessive, neurotic. We did arrive at some sort of... You thinking. arrived. That's the type of man we're after. That type isn't a killer. But if the girl put up a fight? Well, he, he would have run away. But he had a knife, didn't he? You know, isn't it possible he started stabbing away in plain old panic? Of course it's possible. I'm merely trying to point out that another possibility does exist. With all the earmarks of our mugger, the handbag missing, the dark glasses, the small cut in the cheek. Come in. Thought you ought to know right away, Doc. We got half a break on those glasses. Good. They could have been bought in any five and dime store in the city, so origin is out. But we got good thumb and forefinger, latent prints, very clear. How did they check out? They don't. No police record. We've had them all over. Well, it's something. Half a break, anyway. Uh, here's the autopsy report. Autopsy. Big deal. Time of death between 3.30 and 4.30 a.m. Cause of... Didn't you tell the chief this morning this girl had some deep-seated emotional problem tied in with a missing boyfriend? Yeah, something like that. Oh, you couldn't be right her. Why? How? According to this, Jeannie Page was three months pregnant. Yeah, Graham speaking. Yes, Chief. Seven o'clock tonight, here. Right. Chief wants to see us here at seven o'clock tonight. He didn't say what it was. Must be something special. I'm going over to the Baxters. Is this the doc? Oh, of course. Gee, it's a lucky thing I found you in. Uh, I was just in the neighborhood and I thought I'd stop by, say hello. Why, have you something new in the case? New? No, I got nothing. Have you? 
Why are you here? I baked you a chocolate cake. Here. You baked me a cake? So I didn't bake. I bought. What difference? Well, that's very sweet of you, Miss Elliot, but I, I've got business. I just haven't got the time. Now, why don't you leave it with the boys? We'll enjoy it later. Sure, yeah, well, sure. at least read the inscription on the cake, especially for you. Well, I'm in a, an awful hurry now. Here, Kelly, you read it. I'll see it later. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Elliot. We'll yeah. take care of it. Yeah, it's, for the, it's for the dog. We'll make sure he gets it. Thank you, Miss Elliot. Claire, you want to come with me to Molly Baxter's? I can't. I'm stuck here for at least another hour. What's up? Tough day? Yeah, getting tougher every minute. We just found out that Jeannie was pregnant. Now I've got to go see her sister. Oh, that's awful, Peter. I'm sorry I can't help. I'll check with you later. Maybe we can have dinner. Hmm? She was a sweet kid. A good kid. Maybe she was running a little wild, but... Maybe that was my own fault. Maybe I was too strict with her. Why her? Why sweet little genius? Why? Why, why, why? Molly. <laughs> Molly, the, the doc said you've got to get some rest. Come on, honey, please, go on upstairs. Thank you for coming, Dr. Graham. That's just some mess, huh? How did Mr. Greco take the news? Greco? Oh, Nick. Well, he took it worse than Molly did. Poor fella, he just sat there on the sofa and cried like a baby. Did Jeannie have any uh, special boyfriend? No, not that I know of. Why? Well, I didn't want to mention it while Molly was present. Well, mention what, Doc? That Jeannie was pregnant. She was what? Three months. Well, I, I don't believe that. It was in the autopsy report. Well, you think Greco? I haven't any idea. I'll kill him, I swear. Whoever did this, I'll shoot him down like I'd shoot a... You own a gun, Eddie? Yes, I do. I'm not speaking to you as a cop now, Doc. I'm speaking to you as a man. I own a gun and I haven't got a permit for it. But I'm a night worker and some of the creeps that run around at night. I swear to you, whoever did this to Jeannie, I'll... Don't you think there's been enough trouble in this house, Eddie? Don't you think Molly's entitled to some sort of peace? Yeah, I'm Eddie the Dope. I have never done a right thing in my life. You've done okay. Just don't start spoiling it now. Well, I'll try not to, Doc. Thanks. Where did you say Greco live? Well, he lives across the street there in that big house. Yes, sir. What is it? Uh, Mr. Greco. Mr. Greco's been away for the past eight months. Mr. Greco, Jr. Oh, he's left, sir. Packed up and left. Where to? Oh, he didn't tell me where he went to, just packed up and left. May I use your phone? Right inside. When did he leave? This morning. I don't know just what time. Oh, Cassidy, will you send out a flyer to pick up Nicholas Greco? No, no charge. We just want to ask him a few questions. Dark hair, dark complected, just under six feet. He may be carrying a knife. Cassidy, 
Any news in Greco yet? Oh, it's too soon yet, but it's on all the wires. Take it easy with the chief. Well, he's been hauled over the coals. Have you seen him? Evening, chief. Look, thief, I won't pull any punches with you. Everybody's got a carpet to be called on. Mine was the commissioner's carpet, only a little while ago. We're working our heads off. I know you are. I'm not criticizing. Just commiserating. They're just upset by what they read in the papers. But you can't blame them. The town's getting terror-stricken. I called men in from vacations and put others on double duty. Now I've come up with an idea, and I'd like to show it to you. Bait. Pure and simple bait for the mugger. Our girls walking the streets with our men behind. Well, what do you think? Pretty good bait for our mugger, huh? Perfect type. Perfect clothes. Plus. Hmm? Uh, uh, the decoy has to be well ahead of the trailing detective. So a little electronic gadget keeps them in constant communication. Show him, Connolly. Show him, Miss Townsend. Calling all cars, calling all cars. How you doing, Connolly, my boy? Well, I'm with you. Say, how about knocking off for a cup of coffee? Throw in a couple of hamburgers and you got yourself a deal. Uh-oh, Navy cruising up ahead. Well, I'll be if it ain't a blonde. Come here, blondie. Ship by, sailor boy. Run along. Oh, I'll run, honey belt. Y'all run along with me. Sister, I'll run like mad. Now, what's the matter, honey belt? Don't you like sailors? We're the men that goes to sea to protect beautiful tomatoes like you. Not tonight, sailor. Please, I gotta go somewhere. Well, I'll go right along with you, sugar sweet. I'll even buy a drink. I'll buy a couple of drinks. Well, you've had enough to drink already. Please, go away. I'm a married woman. What's the what? I'm a married man. I How's your body, kid? Go away. I ain't going nowhere except with you. I love a blonde and a big one and a pretty one and you all three. Now, come on, big blonde. Break down for a sailor boy here. How's your body, baby girl? Now, listen to me, sailor, and listen hard. I'm a policewoman, see? And right now I'm working and you're cluttering up my job and I don't like it. You are what? I've got a 38 detective special in my handbag. And in about six seconds, I'm going to take it out and I'm going to shoot you in the leg. Then I'm going to leave you here on the pavement and put in a call for shore patrol. I'm counting now. One. What are you getting all hit up about? Two. I, I, I'm all, run along, oh, I don't sailor. even believe you got old. Go Three. Well, I'll be. Four. Good night, lady. <laughs> Man, if you see a big blonde up yonder, steer clear, steer clear, man. Oh! It takes more than the likes of him. Yeah. Well, did he use the knife? No, he didn't have time to get to that, thank heavens. He used his fist. Well, what's that? I tore it from him. Looks like a hunk of pocket and a book of matches. Hang on, here's a fresh pack of cigarettes. There's Wellingtons. Straw tips. And Wellingtons can only be bought at certain places because they're made from a very special Greek tobacco that costs 60 cents a pack. The lab hasn't given us much, but we've got something to go on. With no fingerprints, huh? Nothing, just smudges. Well, all along the doc's been saying that our mugger wasn't necessarily a cheap chiseling bum. Well, he isn't. The lab report. The cloth is an expensive imported wool. The pocket was hand-stitched. It's a custom-made suit. And these matches come from Club Six. So what's your picture on them? A successful man, rich, somewhat of a dilettante, 
somewhat fragile because Claire was able to handle him so easily, luckily. Tall, slender, that comes from Claire, too. And then I'd say somewhat of a finicky type. Where do you get that last? The straw tips. Wellington's come plain tip, too. Maybe that's what it means. Married or single? <laughs> <laughs> well, as to that, I'm not prepared to say. But if he is married, and he fits the psychological composite we've made for him, then his wife should be a strong, dominant individual, someone he can lean on. And you still say when we pick him up, he'll be glad to go, huh? If he runs to type, definitely. When do we start? Tonight. We're all going to the Club Six. Oh, good. Yeah. May I serve you? Sherry, please. Scotch and soda, the same. Bourbon and water. And would you send the cigarette girl over, please? Directly, sir. That's the first time I've ever been in here. It's pretty nice. It's too rich for my blood. Cigarette? Yeah, do you uh, have any Wellingtons? Oh, yes, sir. Straw tips? Oh, yes, sir. Here? Here. Oh, thank you, sir. Nice to you, Graham. How are you, Graham? Jimmy, how are you? Sit down. Thank you. When four cops enter this place together, my nerve ends strangled. Now, what makes you think these friends of mine are cops? Well, when this place was a speakeasy, I was stashing my goods when the cops were still two blocks away. You must have had a pipeline to headquarters. Nope. I smell them. Educated nose. <laughs> okay, Detective Sergeant Kelly, Detective Sergeant Cassidy, and Detective First Grade Claire Thompson. Naturally. Now, perhaps you can tell us what we're here for. Well, since you brought a girl along for cover, I would say you intend sitting around to make it look social. You're waiting for somebody to show. And since you have two male assistants, you're waiting for a man of some size who's done something serious. I guess, uh, you're very serious. Very good deducing. Hmm. And as you entered, I could see that Cassidy was carrying a shoulder holster. Kelly was wearing a 45 on his belt. Miss Townsend probably has something hard and metallic in that bag which she holds in her hands rather than carries by the strap. You, Graham, aren't healed. So you're planning to do some polite talking first. Then maybe the others will take positions at the doors. Jimmy, you're a man of perception and experience. <laughs> I'd like to ask you one big favor. Name it. After you've spotted your man, for heaven's sake, take him outside and make your pinch. So far, I've never had anything happen in here in 20 years. How about it, Graham? My club's clean. I don't think it'll be that easy. On the other hand, I don't think there's going to be any trouble. This man is going to be glad to see me. Come on. No man on the other side is ever glad to see the law. What's his name? I don't know. What's he look like? He's tall, wears expensive clothes. He might be wearing dark glasses. Hmm. Anything else? He speaks with a soft, cultivated voice. What else? He smokes these. Well, wow. now I'm really going to knock you over with a feather. Oh. We stock these cigarettes, which are imported from Greece, for only two people. One of them's a woman. And by simple elimination... The man's name is Corey. F.P. Corey, Jr. I think the F stands for Franklin. I believe he heads an investment syndicate, and I'm not sure. He knows food and wine and shows up here often with his wife. How do we reach him? If your arm was long enough, you could touch him. Graham, look straight ahead at the corner table. You see him? He's wearing tinted glasses and uh, he's fussing with his cuffs. His wife's doing the talking. See him? Jimmy, you're a natural born bloodhound. Hmm. But, Graham, I don't know what he's done, but uh, couldn't you take him downtown and talk? He's a real gent. He'll go along. I'll try. Thanks, Jimmy. Anytime. I'll be watching from the sidelines. It's all so simple when you know the right people. Boy, you psychiatrists are something. You hit the guy perfect, including the wife. 
you still may not be the man we want. So we might as well find out right now. Claire, why don't you wander over there by the barn, that exit block? Kelly, get over in that alcove in front of Corey in case we need you. Cassidy, come with me. We're going to join the chorus. Mr. Corey. My name's Graham, Peter Graham. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't seem to quite remember having... No, you wouldn't. We've never met before. This is Detective Sergeant Cassidy. I'm a police psychiatrist. What's this all about, Frank? Do you know these men? No. No, I, I, I don't. Well, I'll call Mr. Wilson. Will you please go away, unless you want trouble? We have business with your husband, have we, Mr. Corey? Yes. Yes, they have. Police business? Why, Frank, you're upset. No, no, I'm not. The doctor said you'd be glad to see us. Are you glad to see us? Very glad. Yes, at last. What the devil's this all about? It's the end of a horrible nightmare, dear. Please don't make any disturbance. I only wish they'd have come sooner. Shall we go quietly? Yes. Yes, of course. You got your man. That's the bum who cut me. I'd like to cut him like he cut me. I swear in a stack of Bibles, that's the man. Sure, I remember you. You stole my bag, you cut my face, and you sent me to bed sick for a week. My wife positively identifies that man as the mugger. I admit. I admit I admit it all. Everything. Jeannie Page, do you admit that? No. We've got your prints. We're comparing them with those on the glass. Speak up now and help yourself. No. No, no. Tuesday, September the 27th, between 3 and 5 a.m. Where were you? I, I don't know. The night Jeannie Page was killed, the 27th, where were you? I don't know. I, I can't think. I didn't kill. I didn't kill anyone. Jackson Park? A red-headed girl? A redhead. A redhead. He was home. Home. Uh, the wife to the rescue. How come you remember the night of the 27th? Because September 27th is my birthday. Yes, the 27th, her birthday. Shut up. So? There was a party at the house, a large party. It started around midnight and went on until morning. He wasn't out of the house for a minute. And we had 30 guests, 30 people who can verify that. Oh, so the prints on the glasses and Corey's prints were completely different. Doc, I want to apologize. I guess Forget I... Forget it, Cassidy. We got more important things to think about. I still think our number one suspect is the missing boyfriend, the guy who doesn't show up when his girl's killed. We're after a murderer now, and that's more important than all the women terrorized by Corey put together. Well, everything's run downhill so far. What's left? Well, there's one avenue we haven't explored. Come on, Claire, you're going with me. Where are you going? You stick around. We'll be in touch. Where are you going, or is it a secret? No, no, no secret. We're going for a subway ride. Well, now that we're here, what do we do? Poke around. Meaning? Oh, you know the usual routine. Besides, we might get lucky. You know, the public never realizes, and we certainly can't tell them, how many crimes are solved by the long arm of coincidence. Well, which way do we go? You pick it. We poked around. What have we learned? I'll call Cassidy and have him flood the area with nosy plainclothesmen carrying pictures of Jeannie. You never know. There's a phone in there. I'll have a cup of coffee while you phone. Cup of coffee. Sergeant Cassidy. Cassidy. Oh, hi, Pete. We've been waiting for your call. Hey, we got Nick Greco. Yeah, clean as a whistle. Your prints don't fit. 
Got his greetings from Uncle Sam, and he was in boot camp that night. Oh, yeah, checks out 100%. Figured you wanted to talk to him about Jeannie Page on the personal angles. So he'll be here waiting for you. Fine. Now, listen, Cassidy. I want you to take as many men as you can spare. Give them each a picture of Jeannie Page and send them out here on the D train, 236th Street stop. I want them to go around the neighborhood and see if they can find anyone who recognizes her and might give us some information. Okay, Pete, see you soon. Peter. Peter. Yeah? You see that young man leaning against the cab? Yeah. That's the boy that met Jeannie at this subway exit. It is? Why, that's Eddie Baxter, Jeannie's brother-in-law. Are you sure? Definitely. Let's see about this. Hello, Eddie. Well, hello, Doc. Where'd you come from? This is a wilderness out here. Oh, just routine business. Claire, this is Eddie Baxter, Miss Townsend. Hi, how do you do? Hello. Well, what are you doing out here, Eddie? Oh, I'm out here most of the time, Doc. This is my regular stand. Well, I wouldn't know. But you want to make a trip back to town? I'm taking Miss Townsend home. Well, sure. Sure, get in. 228 Linden Street. Eddie? Yeah? Claire's positive she saw you meet Jeannie late one night after she quit the coquette out here. Well, she's got to be mistaken, Doc. Well, I mean, that'd, well, that'd bring Jeannie out here sometime after 1 o'clock. Now, me, I usually oh, knock off no later than 12 o'clock and beat it home. That's on my late nights, too. Eddie, Claire's a police officer. She's certain of her identification. She's a cop? Well, wait, wait a minute, Doc. Now I remember there. That's right, there was one night. Uh, Jeannie called me up and said she wasn't feeling very well. Wanted me to come out and wait for her and drive her back home. I remember, now you're right, there was one night. She called you out here? Where? Well, she... Well, look, Doc, don't make a thing out of it. They called me from the lunchroom. But why would she come out here an hour's ride on the subway when she could get home from the Coquette by cab in 15 minutes? Well, I don't know, don't ask me. She was sort of dizzy about things. Yeah, I know, dizzy. Well, anyway, what's this got to do with the guy that murdered her? I didn't say it had anything to do with it, did I? Well, no, I just thought maybe... Uh... I didn't think anything. Well, all right. Now, listen, Doc. You're not gonna blame this on me. I didn't touch her. I wouldn't do anything like that to Molly's sister. Doc, I'm a married man. Now, you know Molly. But you told me yourself that Molly was getting difficult. She was pregnant and demanding, and... You didn't pay too much attention to her. Jeannie's a very attractive girl. And both of you had time enough to get together, no matter how hard you said you were working. Eddie, I definitely remember you picking Jeannie up one night at the Coquette. It was you, wasn't it? Now, look, lady, you're remembering too much. Now, you're lying! Eddie, I think we ought to take a trip down to headquarters and iron this thing out. No. No, I'm not going to any headquarters. Not now or any time. Eddie, stop the car. You're driving too fast. I can't stop, Doc. No, I'm gonna get rid of all this headache once and for all. You're not gonna blame me for anything. All right, now look, I see what you're doing. She's got a gun in that bag. Now, you listen to me, both of you. You throw that bag out the window right now, or, or I'm gonna wreck this car. Hey, Eddie, they're throwing it. Eddie, we picked up a police car. You don't have a chance. Slow down. No, I don't care. Jeannie's dead. And pretty soon I'll be dead. Yes, and you'll be dead, too. We'll all be dead. You killed Jeannie, Eddie. You killed Jeannie. 
You got her in trouble, then panic set in, and you murdered her. You tried to make it look like the mother you'd read about in the papers. Yes, yes, you're right. I killed her. What do you expect me to do? What are you going to do with somebody who double crosses you by telling your wife? I couldn't help it. I had to. She, she didn't know how to get out of it. Oh, I, I was crazy. Crazy to fool around with her. There wasn't anything else I could do. I had to. I had to. And stop. Stop now. It's useless killing us. You can't get away with what you've done. You'll only make things worse by hurting us. Get away. How do you... How do you get away? I'm a murderer. I killed her. I'm... I'm a murderer. Yeah, stop. All right, I'll stop right now. <laughs> friend of yours? He's in little pieces now. Crazy world we live in. Everybody's in a hurry. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Even to catch a lousy ferry boat. 